And of course, with me today, my special guests on the quest, Sue Kelly and Brandy Wessel. Welcome back. We're talking about the MS Society and their wonderful work in town and women with MS all this week. And we want you to go back and check any of our sites, Vimeo, YouTube, Ustream, our own site, BrokersAlliance.com, and get caught up on everything we've been talking about throughout this whole week specializing in this charity. Well, just before we went to the break, I was... I was attracted to the marketing concept of Brandy's specific to this chapter, right? You said yep. no other chapter is doing this. What is it, a wine tasting type thing event? We're it going is. to that. And, I got to go to that. And I must say I'm excited we're talking about it because we're expanding on it this year. Um, in the past, it's been known as Corks and Chords, an evening of wine and music. And now we've moved it to um, Beat MS. And we emphasize the eat and beat for MS um, because this is really originally started as a specific wine event and now we've really opened it up where a lot of restaurants are supporting us. Um, we've had other distributors that are trying to offer us other kind of spirits for the event. So um, it's a wonderful event. Uh, it takes place in the fall. Ours is September 10th and it's actually at the Mayo Clinic. So up the 134th Street in Shea. Okay, so it's the Mayo Clinic right by our offices. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Yeah. And it's a really nice event. Um, it's really an evening to just, you know, mingle with the community, um, you know, get to know a little bit about our organization. So the restaurants are going to bring food? Yeah. To so we, appetizers, food, yeah, everything else? Last year we had 10 restaurants that um, set up. I'd like to highlight in particular um, ILO's East Coast Italian. They've been with us since the, you know, conception of this oh, event. Yeah. And um, they come and they prepare food and um, do all this, you know, pro bono. They don't they mm -hmm. don't charge anything to bring their food out and um, really support our clients that are there at the event uh, trying to raise money for do MS. Do a lot of the chapters participants, do they come in? You have 8,000 people. Yeah. How many people come from the chapter? Yeah, we had um, a little over 250 people there last year. So it was a, it was a wonderful event. All right, so September 10th yep. at the Mayo Clinic on 134th, right off of Shea, right? Yep. yep. Will be there. Is that an, <laughs> that's an evening event, right? Yes, it is. And the food is going to be fantastic because oh, you'll have amazing. multiple restaurants, right? Yes. Well, I can tell you about the principles of our firm and our sponsoring. We will be there in force because anytime you're doing Italiano with Vino, Steve will be there. <laughs> well, it's the day after my birthday too, so you can save your gift for that day. Oh, so we're celebrating <laughs> Sue Kelly, and if, if this goes out to a quarter million advisors, I just want you to know Sue Kelly with a K, and uh, okay. it's her birthday is September. Ninth. Yes. I don't want to say what year, but I have to <laughs> say year. But she does not belong to the ARP nation, so I'm just trying to, okay, I'm trying to help it out. It's, it's all on camera. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about when you, the chapter does these events, their awareness events. They're so they're using running, biking, uh, uh, the walking, the vino, the vino, the restaurant. I love that part. And of course, we're doing this huge event, Women Against MS Luncheon. Scheduled Thursday, April 28th. It's going to be held at the Arizona Biltmore Resort in Pensacola. If they wanted to come, what number could they call for that? They can call 1-800-344-4867. And if they don't want to do the 800 number and they want it to go out to your website, your website address is? ArizonaMS.org. So there you go, 1-800-344-4867 or ArizonaMS.org. Yes. Get connected, reserve your, we can make this as big as we want. We're going to have over four or 500 people anyways, but yes. but you can, we're just going to have you, but you're going to have Dr. Darren Akuda. Akuda. Yes. yes. Dr. And Darren Akuda is our MS research update. And we also have Cameron Parker, who is our keynote speaker. Uh, she's living with MS and is a spokeswoman for Olay. No, I, I love that. I, I wish I would have known that before we did the show, right? We could have been handing out everybody Olay. That's what we should do. We should hand out Olay should supply the luncheon. Well, we're already, we're on yeah, it. We've got, we got it. The jar, they're handing the jars out? <laughs> yeah, they're going to be handing out products at the event. I think that's golden. There's another reason for you. You'll meet a... You'll meet, actually, Cameron Parker, a model for Olay. Mm -hmm. You'll get some Olay product, right? You'll hear one of the top neuro neurologists, neurologists in the United States, Mr. Darren Akuda. Mm -hmm. I want to say the Barracuda of MS. Right? And our MC is Tara Hitchcock. Yeah, Channel oh, 3, yeah. Good Morning yes. Arizona. I did, with that, I'll see it. With that, I wish I'd known that earlier. Yeah. When we do events like this, and it does awareness, and it raises, because you said, Brandy, we, we, we gave... The society gave. Notice I'm saying we now. Not just me. We, we, we're all part of this now. $45 million last year for research. Yeah. 
Can you think of one thing that came from the research that was really a jump in medical advance in technology? You, you know, you were researching, something came out, and then boom, that was a revelation that really helped a lot of people. I think the newest oral medication is something to highlight. Like I said, because this is the first time um, our MS clients have ever had, a oral, had an oral medication. And like I said, injectables have always been, you know, the way in the past. So I'd say that's one of the, the biggest things that has um, come across recently. Sue, when, are you doing um, injections still? Mm -hmm. Would you would you not be okay with taking oral for yourself, or is that it wouldn't work for you? Or I work with my doctor to find uh -huh. the best choice for me, and right now the injectable that I'm taking is the way for me to go. But for all of us, we need to work with our physician. I'm thinking, you know, you're a nurse, you're probably needle aware. Okay, but you know. I could I could stick a needle into you and it would be kind of fun. But sticking a, <laughs> sticking a needle into me that's a whole different deal. It's so even different you, when it's so you. Even though with an RN, <laughs> you're, you're being an RN. It was when you started having to do this as a regiment. Oh, it was creepy. It was scary. You, you sticking. I didn't like the fact that she was very okay with sticking me. <laughs> I didn't like that part. But 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 I don't mind being stuck because I'm okay with that, right? And I'm not into acupuncture as a recreational issue. So okay, you know what I mean. But I'm just saying for you though, when you you have to get used to doing, putting that needle in mm -hmm. your. I mean, I'm assuming you're right-handed. Does it matter yes. where it goes or? Well, for my injection, it's every day. So I've got arms, stomach, hips, legs, a different spot for every day. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa! You're rotating, so, and why? Um, to keep your skin healthy. So you're not hitting one place all the time. Exactly. So, arms. Hips. It's kind of like the Macarena. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I love that. That kind of goes with our theme of Olay. <laughs> so, sorry. Good pass. Um, when, when people are first, I'm thinking of a nurse, but now I'm thinking of people that are, are not medical, that have MS, mm -hmm. that have to go through this injection. It's, I mean, what is that? I mean, you're used challenge. to it at least. I, I go to people's homes as a nurse um, and teach them how to inject one of the medications and nobody's ever glad to see me show up at the door. They're a little nervous. It's the hardest injection they'll ever do, but they, they're they empowered by the time I leave because they want to be doing all they can and getting on a disease modifying therapy gives us a little bit of control back because mm -hmm. MS can kind of make you feel that you've lost that control in your life. When I was reading uh, several articles on Google, a major theme kept reoccurring in this area of, I've now lost control of my life. That phrase came up in so many mm -hmm. personal testimonies that I actually lost control. Did you feel that at the front end? Absolutely. And how do you get past, no, I'm, I'm how can you, get the encouragement and the intestinal fortitude to say, no, I'm grappling with this. You know, it was it was a process. I, I like control mm -hmm. a lot. My husband will tell you that for sure. Oh, okay, uh, <laughs> I'm putting that down. Control monger. Yeah, okay. yeah <laughs> just, just a little bit. Um, so I had to, to do all I could do to get some of that back. Mm -hmm. And knowing that I was doing, doing all I could medically mm -hmm. gave me that sense of control back. Um, Working with my doctor to exercise, you know, pick an exercise program that's mm -hmm. good for me. Um, laughing, having a community support, doing volunteer activity, all those things help me get that control back and live well with MS. Susan, how did you know what doctor to go to? You know, it was that was kind of a learning process too. So did um, you go through a few physicians until you finally found I, the one that worked with? I did. I did. Is that typical? Um, Is that typical? Yes. You have to yeah. kind of and see who you can yeah. work and, with. And I do remind patients that doctors are our employees. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. But one physician, just like one medication, isn't going to be the right fit for everybody. And, and I found a physician who said, hey, we're going to work together as a team. And I was amazed. And, mm -hmm. and we do. How long have you been with that specific physician? Um, I started, he was the second doctor I saw, and then I, I took a little break because his office was kind of far away, and I thought, oh no, I'll be okay without him, and I was drawn back. So um, I've been with him about six or seven years. Randy, is that typical for a woman with MS to have, you know, kind of go through the pattern of, oh, hey, try this guy, try that, per that physician, that, this physician, then finally settle on somebody, and then they stay with that person? 
Yes. So that yeah. that's typical. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take? Have you seen of your eight thousand Arizona clients? How long does it take to settle on a person? Is it your your, your first year, or second year, or no? It comes quicker than that. You know, I think it really depends. Um, like Sue mentioned, I hear a lot of people mention the um, the. Uh, it being convenient the location mm -hmm. so I know even if they identify someone that they like if it's an hour drive away it's something that hampers them from going back to them so I think that it really takes a little bit um, to figure out what exactly is going to work for you depending on how often um, you know you're going to visit and um, again the, the length of the drive if that was an issue ge geography mm -hmm. and the length of the drive and MS affected my it could affect my body at any one. I could be having a bad day. I can't drive that day, right? I can't because you were talking about the loss of vision, or mm -hmm. or my leg isn't working properly, or my hands aren't co are, aren't cooperating. I would have to I have to think about that before I get behind the wheel. Is that so? Oh, certainly. And you know, hopefully, I usually try to have my husband go to neurologist appointments with me because mm -hmm. it's good to have a second set of ears. Hopefully they'd have someone, family member, friend, who could go with them and do the driving and, and help them out as needed. Is it tough to be dispassionate when you're hearing the physician talk to you? And is it good to have your husband there because he kind of interprets? Mm, I don't know. I think there are just some things that he might see in mm -hmm. my MS that maybe I don't. Because mm -hmm. maybe you're too close to it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's good to have an outsider, I don't mean outsider like because you're right. your husband, but a, 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 a second set of eyes, mm -hmm. a second set of ears. Absolutely. And that's why if people that are alone, they say, well, I don't have anybody like Sue does. That's why the society is so important because they have like this counseling coach. This, yeah. this guy knows all the resources that you can tie into. He's, he's the quarterback. And I think it ties into what Sue said a couple days ago, where, um, you know, finding that community support. Because again, I think once they connect with us too, um, you know, we have a, a whole group of women planning this luncheon. Mm -hmm. We have a whole group of people planning the bike event, you know, mm -hmm. a whole group of people helping plan programs in the community. So even if your family is out of state and not close, you know, we mm -hmm. definitely have a, a wonderful network of people that are involved in some way or another that, that they wow. can build on as well. Well, join us tomorrow for our final show on MS with our guest Sue Kelly and our guest Brandy Wessel.